I had a student come into my classroom one year when I was teaching fifth grade, and her name was Paula. She was a skinny little girl, little tiny, um, probably what Sherry looked like when she was a fifth grader. <laughs> really, really cute. <laughs> and she was brilliant, though. <laughs> Just like Sherry. <laughs> uh, she was. She was really smart. In fact, I, I would forget about her stature uh, and, and her small her small physical appearance because her thirst for knowledge was huge. I mean, she made a hundred on every assignment. She loved research projects. She loved science experiments. She would ask to stay in from recess to do more work. Now, that was not typical in my classroom. <laughs> but she loved, loved school. And so all of this didn't even make me even think about maybe what her family or personal situation was until I saw her cumulative folder when it finally got to me. And it showed that Paula had been in 15 different schools before she got to my fifth grade classroom. And that her family of four lived in the back of a pickup camper in somebody else's driveway. Well, all of us in the classroom were reminded of Paula's situation the day of the Christmas party. She came to school with this crushed red Christmas bow on her dress. <coughs> and uh, it looked like it had been on a lot of packages before it got to her dress. And she stood by my desk while I opened all the presents from all the other kids. And you know, we're opening them up and we're ooing and aahing. Now my husband has been in secondary education all of his life. And he's always complaining about how elementary teachers get all the good gifts. <laughs> and he's been an administrator, he's been an instructional facilitator. He goes, we don't get the good gifts. You know, you guys get all... That year I got soap and perfume. It was, it was bad perfume. <laughs> and I was starting to feel bad. It's like, what, is there something about the way I smell, you know? And then someone mentioned how great it was that they were able to give me all these little baskets of, of soap because there'd been this sale on the, in the store by the school. <laughs> But we oohed and we awed over all the soap, and I talked about how my husband really needed it. And uh, I put on all the perfume, you know. And after they were finished with the packages, they all went to their chairs, and Paula kind of hung around, and I looked at her. I said, well, Paula, I just want to tell you how beautiful you look today in that bright red bow. I mean, it just looks so good for you to wear that to a Christmas party. And she got this gorgeous smile. And she said, well, I'm glad you like it, Mrs. Crowder, because I wanted to give you something like all the other kids, but I didn't have any. So I thought if I wore this bow, I could be your present. Oh, oh my goodness. And of course, I, I told her, I said, you are the most beautiful present I've ever gotten. And the cool part about this present is I'm going to get it every day you come to school. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like getting my present all over again. The sad thing is, I never got it again. And she didn't know that was going to happen. But over the Christmas holidays, her family got in that camper and they went to another driveway in another place. And I've never heard from her again. But I know she's making it. She's making it because she figured out how to utilize the only stable thing in her life of public school. She knew that wherever her kids, wherever her parents and her family landed, she could just go to a public school. There'd be one there. And if she just learned everything she could, that's why she was soaking up everything. If she could learn everything she could while she was there, she would have a better chance. She had figured that out. And she was doing that. And she taught me that no matter how well I might teach in my classroom, it's not good enough for kids like Paula. Because they are dependent upon every classroom, every teacher, every support professional, every administrator. They are dependent on about everyone who works in a public school all across America. So if I care about that, I need to be involved in a state and a national organization <coughs> whose purpose is to create a great public school for every student. Every student, no matter where they come from, no matter if they have a home or not. And I believe that's the definition of a professional. A good teacher, a good administrator, a good support professional can do a good job in their little work area. They can do a great job. They can be teacher of the year. But a professional reaches out and gets involved and does things that, that lift up the entire profession. That's why I'm so proud to be in this place, full of professionals, people who have given their extra time, because you care about this profession. 
And that's why I'm excited about the opportunities in this election season for us to help elect others who understand what professionals need and what our profession needs to improve things for all students everywhere, no matter where they come from, no matter where they're going. So that's my personal story on why to be involved.